Hi, you guys. Welcome, welcome back. My name is Carrie Penny. I am the Happy Crafty Homemaker, and welcome to Show and Tell number 61. So, not a whole lot going on here. It's been kind of quiet overall. Um, I haven't filmed a show and tell, I think, in two weeks now. But uh, there really hasn't been a whole lot to report as far as finished objects. I did do my Easter cards in their own separate video. Um, so if you missed that, go check that out. Um, yeah, I got most of my Easter cards out. Um, I think everybody got them on time, more or less. Um, I've been working on some spring cards. Uh, I've spent a lot of time working on my sweater. However, I have not gotten that completed yet because I've had to reshift my mind to the subscription box review stuff that I haven't been working on. I got an email saying my Alpaca Direct was coming and realized I haven't even cast on for the last month's project. I got so distracted with the hat staring lint and hat not hate hats and working on that sweater that I just... So I've spent most of this week either working on spring cards or last month's Alpaca Direct project. Um, I haven't even been to the grocery store since last Friday. So it's been six days. Um, I was able to find an Easter ham. So we've kind of been eating on that all week. <laughs> um, yeah, if there's leftovers in there, like I'm not going to bother cooking. Um, we did ham and coleslaw for lunch today, and we're going to do omelets tonight for dinner. Yeah. So, what did I get done? Well, if you saw my mandala thick and quick review, you saw my um, perfect toque hat and my cowl to match the perfect beanie that I did a couple weeks ago. Or not perfect, pebble. Pebble stitch beanie. And that's the cowl to go with it. Um, <laughs> if you want to know what I thought about the yarn, please go check out that review video too. Um, that should be um, in the um, playlist for yarn reviews. Um, by the way, I do have playlists set up on this channel. If you go to the channel information bar, um, I do have one that's um, just the show and tells. One for subscription box unboxings, one for yarn reviews, one that's non-crafty or non-yarny crafts. Um, so go check out the playlist too if you just kind of wanted to get an overview of kind of what I've done for each each section of stuff there. But um, yeah, those are my only yarny finished objects for the last two weeks. Um, like I said, I did do a separate video with all of my Easter cards. And I do have some of my spring cards here. So I told you guys I was going to split that paper pack up and do it, um, do as many Easter cards as I could out of it. But there were a lot of cut aparts in that thing that or that paper pack that had um, generic spring information or greetings in there. Very thirsty. Still have pollen stuff going on here but um yeah so these are the ones from that photo play paper pack somebody loves you um they all have different spring greetings um wishing you a bright and beautiful warm spring they're all decorated on the inside and outside just like the easter cards were i heart spring Eventually, I'm going to start trying to film more of these, like, on the desk. So I can just kind of lay them out and flip through them quicker. Hello, spring. I love that washi tape. That color green is just so pretty. That's like that. I've mentioned it on here before, the Ann Gettys baby yarn with red heart. There was a spring green color in that collection, and I love that shade of green. I'm not a green person. I love that shade of green. Spring flowers. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I have two different 
groups of cards, sorry. This is another Somebody Loves You, and this is, I put the sticker up on foam tape. But that's using the another one of the stickers. And this is my favorite one from this group. I just think that turned out so stinking cute. This is all I have left from that entire paper pack. There's a couple of stickers in there, a couple of ephemera pieces. This is one um, four by five and a quarter card base and then some scraps. So I will add that in the, um, I have a 12 by 12 iris case on a shelf in my closet in there that's just uh, Eastern Spring. So I'll stick that in there so I can use that next year. I did get a couple bases done and I did go ahead and decorate the backs, but I didn't finish decorating the fronts of these. These are just, well, some of them, I guess I did. That's using one of the ephemera pieces. But I was just going through and playing with some scraps, trying to use, you know, use what I had left. So those will also go with my, I mean, I've got like a third left over of what I did from the Joyous Easter pack. This was so easy to use. And I did use... A couple of card sketches to help me out. I did once again use some of the um, sheet load of cards from Alicia. Uh, what's her name? I totally. Is it Alicia? No. Call me crafty out. I used some more of her sheet load of cards. I also pulled out so. Um, a while back, I had given Becky from Funny Farm Crochet a bunch of duplicate paper pads that I had and paper packs that I had. And in some of the six by six ones, I just didn't have time to go through all of those. But I did know I had um, duplicates of one of them. I had three. Uh, so I took one of those out and started making cards with it. Finished the entire six by six pad. Still didn't have enough spring cards to send out, so I opened into another one and uh, have been kind of using that. But now all of those cards are completely finished. This is all that I've got that are completely done. Um, the first one, this is the April 2019 sheet load of cards sketch. And the little cut apart there says stay unique on the inside. I stamped. So, at two of these, I really love how this worked out. These turned out really, really pretty. They're a little more formal than I normally make. Um, I'll talk about this one next. So, this is the same card sketch. A lot of the cut aparts were just blank. So, I had um, a little hay to brighten your day. I think that's a, it's something Tuesday stamp. And then this is one of the Simon Says stamp stamps. And um, because the covers on these feel so thick, the backs were feeling really flimsy. I did um, stamp this on 60 pound cardstock and back it with a piece of just colored cardstock from my stash. I have a whole bunch of the recollections, just plain eight and a half by 11 cardstock. And it's not that I want to get rid of it. I want to be at the point where I'm buying it by the project. I have so much of it. So I am just kind of trying to blow through a lot of that. Um, unless it's off-white, black, white, or craft. Um, and I, I did use a lot of black cardstock on this group of cards so far. Um... Those I just kind of want to keep on hand in general. Now, this one's a little bit different. I've got three that look like this. Only one of them has an inside so far. The inside says, only in a world of love can we unfold and bloom. And that came from a sticker pack from Hobby Lobby, I believe. So that's what I've gotten done done. These are all ready to send out, so I will count these all but the Easter cards. Um, this is just 
because these aren't completely done. I'm going to stick these in the Easter bin. I'll go weigh these and start addressing them and stamping them and getting those out. Um, so yeah, that's everything I've completed. Like, I feel like I haven't completed that much because it has been so many cards and I did split the cards off for Easter into their own video because I was getting so much yarny stuff completed. It was making my show and tell videos way too long. My entire um, mouth and nose and everything are just really dry. Um, we've had very low humidity and high winds for the last couple days, so it's not surprising. Just even my skin is like I've got oily skin and like even my skin is like. So I did get some happy mail I wanted to share with you guys. Carla over at Crochet CJ sent me some happy mail. She sent me this beautiful row counter. I really love these row counters. I just think so many of them are so pretty, and this one in particular is very, very pretty. So she sent me that. And she also sent me some yarns. And she sent me my favorite neutral. So this is Amphora from Universal Yarns. She found this at Tuesday morning. I just recognized the... <laughs> I mean, it's so funny, but that's like the only place I regularly see Universal Yarns too, which is also weird to me. Um, so these are 100 gram balls, 60% acrylic, 20% alpaca, 20% mohair. And it's a size 3. I am pretty sure I have a coral size three that I can pair that with. And I was thinking about maybe doing a striped shawl using the same kind of slip stitch edging that I've been using on the Alpaca Direct project. I don't know. I don't see anything else immediately that screams it needs to go with this. But I think the coral will be really pretty. I could do coral and lavender. I do have a purple and pink that would be pretty with it. So yeah, I'm already project planning and I, it's not like I don't already have 900 projects on the go that... It's not that I need to get them done. I really want to get them done. So I need to get them done. I mean... <laughs> yeah. So I'm already like future tripping all that. Um, my sweater, if you follow me on Instagram, the last picture update I did of my sweater, that's as far as I've gotten. I haven't touched it since two Sundays ago now. Um, so it's been a week and a half. I've really heavily been working on this project. This is the Alpaca Direct cowl. And I'm still... Not quite sure. I think what's going to happen is when I bind this off, somehow I'm going to join here and here. And it'll make a tube on this end. And this is what's going to hang down. But I'm still not quite sure. I'm hoping there's a picture because I've only got one more striped section and one more solid section left to go. Well, I guess I'm changing this up. So one more solid section and one more striped section left to go on this. This has actually been a really nice project. And if this ends the way I think it ends, <laughs> uh, this might actually be a cowl I can wear because... If it goes together the way I think it does, I think I can wet block it into a proportion that won't feel super tight around. I, I don't like things around my neck. So something like this kind of cowl that's more like a necklace. It's, it's away from the throat area. I'm fine. Um, but anything that 
can't do it. I will sit here and tug at it and pull at it and scratch at it. I don't wear turtlenecks. I don't wear mock turtlenecks for those same reasons. Um, but this yarn's been really, really nice to work with. And because of the bamboo in there, I actually think it's going to breathe more. So if I can block it out the way I think I might be able to, I think we're going to be okay. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. But I have more to say about that. Um, we will be doing the unboxing for Alpaca Direct Month 3. Uh, Saturday that video will be up. Sorry, reclean my, <laughs> my little filming bubble here. Um, so I'll talk more about that in that video. But yeah, that's been getting most of my attention this week when I've been upstairs. I haven't worked on my fish lip kiss heel socks at all. Uh, I have been working on some more uh, Hat Not Hate hats. Those are sitting upstairs. Um, before I started the Plymouth yarns for that, I did want to uh, finish using the ice yarns that I had upstairs pulled out. So hopefully I'll get those done here shortly and can move on to something different. Um, that's everything from my notes. Happy mail, cards, finished objects. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it helps when I actually remember to bring my notebook down with me. Um, I did have something really quickly I wanted to discuss with you guys that is related to yarn. So I've gotten a couple really nice emails recently um, from people who are newer to knitting and crochet. And they asked how to build a stash. And I hate trying to answer this question because to a certain degree, I sound kind of rude, but please don't take it that way. Don't build your stash thinking you want to build a stash. Um, I made the mistake as I was building my stash of buying everything I found on sale. If I'd never worked with it, and I found it for a dollar, I'd buy 20 balls of it. And if I touched it and thought, eh, it's okay, I still bought 20 balls of it. And in 2018, I did a yarn ban and really used up all the yarns that I had bought that I wasn't in love with. And really purged a lot of those out of my stash. You guys didn't see a lot of that. I didn't have a YouTube channel until the end of that year. Um... But a lot of those projects for my goal of using 20 pounds in four months or three months, a lot of that was stuff that came out of that. Um, now my stash is made up of a bunch of stuff that I love because I refilled those holes plus some with things that I love. But um, don't look at it as stash building. Really heed my warning on this. When you pick up a yarn that's on sale that you love, feel it, really look at the color of it, and ask yourself, is this something I would casually pick up to work with? Um, I mean, you can tell looking just at a cursory glance, with the exception of this yarn right here, I really love either... Very, very rich jewel tone fall colors or pinks, purples, and blues. I mean, <laughs> um, and those are all colors I just casually pick up to work with. Those are my favorite three colors. If I were a colorway, it would be pink, aqua, and purple. Um, really think, is this something I will casually pick up to work with? Touch the yarn and really think Feel it on your face. Feel it around your neck. Feel it in your hands. What would I, if I could, if I could buy a hundred balls of this, would I wear it in a sweater? Would I want it in a blanket? Would I want it around my face? There are beautiful yarns that are great for making blankets that feel horrible around your face and neck. There are things that make great hats that I would never wear as a sweater. Um, I loved like the um, Premier Spun Colors. I made a scarf out of mine. Love it. Made a headband out of it. 
love it. I would never make a sweater out of that yarn. So really feel it and think like, is this something I really just want a hat and sweater out of or a hat and scarf out of and only buy three or four balls if it's something you would only make a hat and sweater out of. If it's something you think you would casually pick up out of your stash to make a blanket with, also consider would you want a whole blanket in red heart striped sombre or uh, Fruit Loops or um, the neon lights? Is this really where you want to go with that yarn? Is this something you're, because I bought yarn that I loved and I, as I finished working with it, I adored it. I thought it was beautiful. It's a beautiful color, but I bought 40 balls of this yarn. I wasn't going to make a whole blanket out of one color. Um, so maybe I should have kept it to like eight balls of that color. Um, so really, <laughs> if you're trying to build your stash up and, and want to shop like I do, which was very heavily, I shop on sales. I mean, I got, you know, most of these for a dollar each when Lion Brand did the case sales. My friends and I split up a bunch of cases and paid a dollar a ball for it. Um, I've got a huge stack of baby pink Lion Brand Pound of Love. I've got two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven pounds of baby pink from two separate projects I was going to make. Um, the first round I shouldn't have bought. <laughs> out of the gate. I shouldn't have bought the first five. The other six I bought to go with the mint green and the white and had planned to do a Sophie's Universe blanket. Started getting into other things and never got around to Sophie's Universe. Um, but I bought it for a project in mind. Now that I'm not going to do the Sophie's Universe with it, I still have other options. I bought colors that I knew because I found them for $2 a pound, which is an amazing deal. Um, they're normally $10. Um, I bought what I did specifically for that Sophie's blanket, decided not to make it, but I bought colors that I knew I could make baby stuff with. Those are all colors that would make beautiful shawls. Um, those were definitely purchases made consciously, at least the second one was made consciously as to if I don't do this, what else can I do with this yarn? Um, the bloom yarn I bought at the premiere sale, I bought by the bag. And with the exception of hydrangea, I only bought one bag of each color that I bought. I only bought the colors I knew I would love to work with or I could gift easily to somebody else. Um, so my advice, if you're trying to build a stash, is really be conscientious about where you're putting your money because you don't want a whole bunch of yarn that was cheap that you don't like. Um, I was very lucky with weird purchases like Sheepish. When Sheepish was discontinued, it was 79 cent a ball at my Joann's. When Spinrite was still doing their big um, warehouse boxes, I know there are a couple people who have talked about the good old days of Spinrite. Um, I was buying some of that yarn for 25 cent a ball. I had worked with it to make a hat, knew I loved it. So when I saw it on those sales, I bought oodles of it. I mean, I've got enough of that yarn to last me the rest of my crafting life right there. Um, and they're all colors I love. They're all colors I'll work with. I, when I got a brown, I got the taupe brown, not the chocolate brown, um, I got a lot of the blues, pinks, grays, and purples. Um, so even at 25 cent a ball, I was very conscientious about which ones I bought, even though I knew I loved the yarn. Uh, I didn't have an idea of what to make with it. I just knew it wouldn't make a great blanket. It could be a good blanket, but not a great blanket. Um, so keep those in the back of your mind when you're seeing like the sales and the deals and stuff. 
make sure that this is something that you're actually going to want to use. Um, having it and not using it or not being compelled to use it is worse than not having it at all and having to use coupons to purchase, in my opinion. In my opinion. Um, I use a huge variety of fibers, so I do purchase a wide variety of sizes, colors, things like that. But if I'm impulse shopping, it's really going to normally be the colors I use a lot of, which very clearly is a very specific set of colors here uh, that I, I repair it and everything I buy. <laughs> Uh, but just keep those things in mind because you don't want to have to weed out, gift away, donate things that you still spent money on. Uh, it's like the paper pads that I had duplicates of. If I had paid full price for those, I would be horrified at myself. At least I got those on sale. And one of the reasons why I got so many duplicates was because they were on sale. I didn't conscientiously purpose purchase the paper pack. So I ended up gifting away the equivalent of like $200 in scrapbook paper because I'd bought so many extras of these things. So just kind of, that would be my advice. And since I keep getting the question repeatedly, um, I thought I'd kind of throw that in this video. Be a conscientious shopper and really think about what you would use this yarn to make, not just the price tag on it. Um, there's no shame in standing there in the store, squishing it, daydreaming, thinking, hat, mm, no scarf, no socks. Anybody who's in the yarn aisle already knows that you're weird and going to be squishing yarn because they're in there to squish yarn too. So... Just take your time and really spend a few minutes thinking, is this something I'm going to use or is it just going to take up room? And then once you decide, yeah, I can totally, you know, use this in a blanket, use this in a hat, use this. If it's something you can make a whole bunch of stuff out of, buy 20 balls of it. I mean, why not? If you've got the money to do it, buy all 20 balls of it. But if it's something where you're on the fence in particularly, really take the time to process it properly. Because <laughs> I did end up with a lot of stuff I just didn't like working with. I didn't enjoy it. It was frustrating for me to work with it. And then I'm sad I spent my money on it because I don't like it. And it's not just like colors, but like textures. I've picked up some of the yarns I've bought before and been like, what? I mean, even at $1.50, why did I buy this? Why did I buy 10 of these? Because this is awful. <laughs> so just that's my advice of how to do it. Do it smartly. Be, be better than me. <laughs> Because I see color and go, ooh. But I've had a couple of you guys email me and I've kind of danced around it in the emails. I've danced around it on the channel before. I really haven't point blank said be smart about it because it sounds rude. But yeah, that's my two cents on how to build your yarn stash. Find a sale touch the yarn. If you don't love it, walk away from it. Because otherwise, it's just going to sit there collecting dust. And you're still at square one where you have to go buy yarn to make a project. I'm at the point now where I can come downstairs, look at my yarn and go, "Ooh, I really want to work with and grab it off the wall. And if I don't have a pattern for it already, go find a pattern that matches the yardage I have. And even though I had about this much yarn before, I couldn't do that because I wasn't excited to work with everything like I am now. Now it's like I come in here and I'm overwhelmed because it's like 
I want to work with this color. No, I want to work with this color. No, I want to work with that Angora over there. <laughs> I don't have Angora. Well, I take it back. I have a ball about this big of Angora and it's, but I, I... anyway, you guys take care. I will see you again on Saturday with my Alpaca Direct unboxing for month three. I hope you found something in here useful or informative. Once again, it's 30 minutes of babbling, saying a whole lot of nothing, but you guys take care and I'll see you real soon. Love you guys. All I wanted to do was come in here and brush my teeth. I haven't even gotten the toothpaste on my toothbrush yet. Now Curzon, on the other hand, is just politely hanging out, waiting to get attention. <laughs>